700 plus people are cooperating, which means the committee has all kinds of rich and sometimes damning information. Then there are those who stonewall. And that brings us to a big story that we've been covering from the start on the beat by going to the sources and getting you all the information and facts we can gather. It was last night. You see the scene here as the January 6th committee held contempt proceedings and ultimately voted unanimously to hold two Trump aides in contempt for outright and rank defiance. One was a digital aide, Dan Scavino. The other is Peter Navarro. Now, in that hearing last night, committee members were quite clear, candid and blunt about why those Trump aides must face consequences. Peter Navarro's testimony is integral to our investigation. The former president trusted Mr. Navarro as a spokesman and confidant. Mr. Navarro insists that he is above the law. This is America, and there's no executive privilege here for presidents, much less trade advisors, to plot coups. There are many reasons why this blanket assertion of executive privilege lacks merit as a matter of law and as a matter of common sense. What, Mr. Scavino and Mr. Navarro, are you covering up? Who are you covering for? Who are you covering for? That's a big question, especially when you think about what I just mentioned. The president's own top aide and son-in-law, Jared Kushner, is testifying. So why can't you share what you're doing? And that brings to that key moment from inside the room, a bit of history unfolding. It's what Nicole Wallace mentioned. Peter Navarro has been claiming his view, his assertion of his own executive privilege as the reason that he will not address this committee despite a lawful subpoena. But, of course, he admitted to some of the very things they want to question him about, including the outlines of a coup, in an interview right here on MSNBC's The Beat. And that brings us to this moment, which I'm going to play for you so you can see exactly what happened inside the committee room, although it does touch on journalism and what we've heard here on MSNBC. This is how the committee uses that interview as its new evidence for contempt. Mr. Navarro made multiple media appearances during which he discussed his various roles in the events that culminated in the January 6th attack. I'd like to play a video, uh, media clip right now. Can you please cue the clip? It, what about this interview, which is kind of interesting, is like I have so much knowledge uh, to share with you about what, what I was involved in and what I know. Given that you've told me that you have a plan that you push to delay or deal with the certification, you've told me 100 members back it, and you've said in public Trump was on board. If you say all those things out here, why risk a legal battle or going to jail to refuse to discuss them with the committee under oath? Uh, because uh, I have a loyalty to the Constitution and a loyalty to the president. The president has invoked executive privilege in this matter. It's not um, my authority uh, to uh, revoke that privilege. You say it's not your privilege to waive, but let's look the law. at no, how it's, often it's the you've law. waived it. Let's look at some of the news you've made on these topics, take a look. Former Trump advisor Peter Navarro is spilling the beans. We had uh, over 100 congressmen and senators on Capitol Hill ready to implement the sweep. Peter Navarro. Right? The, the boss tells Pence to take my friggin' call. Navarro tells Rolling Stone. It was about sending the votes back. Most or all of those states would decertify the election. How do you expect people to take seriously your claim that this is secret and privileged when you've been out there talking about it? And when you and Bannon said the committee's dog wouldn't bark, they were afraid of you and the report, it seems now, Peter, like the dog has barked. Thank you. He has so much knowledge to share with a journalist, but he refuses to share that knowledge in response to a lawful subpoena. 